The Minecraft marketplace has been shrouded in mystery for a long time now. There is a lot which is hidden behind the scenes, from a special Minecraft developer-only version to a set of rules and guidelines the public is not allowed to know. You know what? I'll cut to the chase. About a month ago, I made a video talking about some of the info I gathered on the marketplace, most of which is hard to find, but still, public. Well, since then, I've been contacted by a few individuals with information that has not been shared publicly before. Information which, if shared, would likely result in their Marketplace partnership being terminated. Information about how much money Marketplace creators make, misconduct and theft on the Marketplace, and much, much more. And it's truly shocking what goes on behind the scenes. So, let's first talk about those unique guidelines we discovered in the last video as I've received more specific information about them as well as learned of some newer and very weird guidelines. I talked about how LGBT content is technically not allowed, but upon searching Pride there is some content in that domain. Well, as it turns out, Microsoft intentionally allows search terms like quirky and rainbow to bypass such a rule solely for PR, as this makes them seem less like they are picking one side over the other. I also mentioned in the last video that skin packs had to feature skins of multiple ethnicities. This is supposedly so they don't create racial division, and in line with this, there must be at least one skin in a skin pack that represents a minority. This however only applies if the skin pack has normal themed characters. So for example, the rule doesn't apply to demonic or magic related skin packs. Once again, it seems like a rule solely in place for PR reasons. There are some new guidelines I learnt about as well. You can't use Herobrine in any content on the marketplace and you can see that upon searching Herobrine, there are no search results. Furthermore, the content you make should not make the player commit crimes, especially in the stories of adventure maps. Basically, you aren't meant to make the player do certain things that could be considered too dark. And here's an example of an interview with a dev group who made a prison-based map talking about just that. How long were you guys working on Prison Escape? Well, it's complicated. Prison Escape had a different story, and it was blocked by Microsoft. It was too dark. Originally, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but whatever. The story was about Danny getting to where he is, and you push the Baron off the roof, and he dies. It was all done, animated, submitted, and everything. We had to work with Microsoft to get a different script going. We had to re-record stuff. They and... didn't like the fact that you had somebody actually kill somebody. Well, it was more the issue that the player was the one taking the action to kill someone and that you were forced to do so. And basically we were told, player's not allowed to feel bad. The developers made the player kill an NPC as part of their story and Microsoft did not allow that. This is pretty stupid, as in vanilla Minecraft, you kill a bunch of stuff all the time. I mean, most Bedrock servers are PvP related, where you kill other players often. Obviously, I understand that in a story context this is slightly different, but come on Microsoft, no kid is going to be scarred or upset from having to kill a Minecraft NPC. Java players were doing just that in adventure maps over 10 years ago now. By the way, before we go on, consider subscribing. These kind of videos take a lot of work and research, so I would appreciate you doing so. No pressure. Anyways, a big problem with the marketplace is copyright or stolen content. In the last video, I highlighted how Among Us content was everywhere, totaling over 800 results, much of which is low effort and has stolen elements. We've discovered that the reason why Microsoft doesn't act upon copyrighted content is because they've put terms into the marketplace partner agreement, basically saying they assume that the marketplace creator has gained permission to use the copyrighted content. This basically puts all the responsibility on the creator, and as you can imagine, not all creators are going to follow the copyright write guidelines when they're not enforced, especially considering that Microsoft don't seem to care as they make money regardless. I was told that the only way to actually get stolen or copyrighted material removed or even checked by Microsoft is to file a DMCA complaint and even then it's still no guarantee. Content is regularly stolen and slightly modified so that the thief can claim that they just took inspiration from the original. I have a story to share of such a case. A contractor who used to work with marketplace creators informed me of a case where a Minecraft marketplace manager acted quite inappropriately upon concern behind a Minecraft marketplace creator stealing parts of skins and using them. The user who contacted me shared this graphic which basically shows how elements of other skins have been stolen and used in content on the marketplace with only slight modifications, if any at all. Upon reporting the issue, the Minecraft marketplace manager, whose identity I will keep private, accused them of talking trash about other creators and spreading rumors when all they did was simply present the evidence of plagiarism and theft. Upon being further questioned by a third party, the marketplace manager mentioned not wanting to go into further detail as it would cause drama, which is contradictory as they already brought up the issue instigating drama regardless. 
The marketplace manager proceeded to further argue that the user was not reporting the content, but instead attacking other partners and spreading rumors. Specifically, the marketplace manager mentioned that the user had no evidence, yet they did, even going as far as having a video of a partner's stream whereby a plagiarized skin base was used. Now this was shared with me by one party, with the other party not being present to refute such claims, and as such, while there is clearly evidence of stolen content, we may not have the full picture of this event. Regardless though, my point with showing you all this is to display how the issue was handled very poorly. Even if the conclusion of this case was that the content was different enough to be considered fine, it should have been handled significantly better by the marketplace manager. It's not like stolen content is exactly a rarity on the marketplace, and reactions like this to users who report content clearly show that it's no easy task getting content removed. This isn't the only case of this happening either. I was told by another marketplace partner that there has been cases Cases where skins are stolen from other marketplace creators and sold. In their case, they discovered that another marketplace partner was caught stealing skins off Name MC and only slightly altering colors as well as certain patterns, then selling them on the marketplace. Here, as you can see, is the skin on Name MC, which according to the website, was first seen on January of 2020. A skin pack was later created in 2021, containing an almost exact replica of the skin with slightly different hair and eye colors. Upon pointing out the issue, it was almost immediately brushed off. Nothing ended up happening, and the skin is still available on the market today in a skin pack with hundreds of reviews, meaning it likely made thousands of dollars. And as such, the issue of low effort and plagiarized content flooding the marketplace, drowning high effort content out only continues to persist. The marketplace is known to have some really unique and stupid technical issues as well. Muin Cowmilk, who has been involved in the marketplace in the past, provided me with some interesting information. You see, when content on the marketplace is removed, it doesn't well actually get removed, but rather gets unlisted. This means that similar to how unlisted YouTube videos work, if you have the direct link, you can still get the content in game. In one such amusing case, using this method, you can find a map which costs 1 million mine coins. The story behind this map was that it was a limited time free map, but once that time ran out, they couldn't remove the map from the store. They instead unlisted it and set the price to something super high to prevent players from buying it. Furthermore, marketplace content becomes unusable if you don't have internet connection. It simply won't let you create a new world with the marketplace map, even if the files are stored locally. The marketplace clearly has some deep technical flaws. When submitting new content to the marketplace, each partner is capped at three submissions per week, where the review process can take anywhere from two weeks minimum to up to three months. Considering this review process hardly seems to do much, with lots of copyrighted and plagiarized content flooding the marketplace, why does it take so long? This big delay can actually be quite harmful to creators who rely on marketplace income. For example, let's say you spend months working on a big map or something and upon submitting it, it takes two to three months to finally be listed on the marketplace. That's two to three months without the income from the map. Speaking of income, I'm sure you are all dying to know how much money these marketplace creators get. Fortunately, I've been given the rates. Here are the prices of items marketplace creators can set their product to be, ordered by tier, depending on the price. On the right hand side is how much the marketplace creators receive from each sale. They only receive a 37.5% cut from each sale. That means if they sold a skin pack for let's say $2, the marketplace creators only get 75 cents. If they sold a custom map, which blood, sweat and tears went into for $10, they only get $3.75. Keep in mind that many marketplace creators often work in teams with multiple texture designers, contractors, developers and more. This is shocking. Microsoft is taking 62.5% of the profits from the marketplace. Just as a point of comparison, Steam, the game launcher and store, takes a 30% cut of all game sales made. And even then, there are quite a few people in the industry who consider that too high. So Microsoft taking more than double that is really, really high. Like I mentioned, a lot of marketplace content, especially the high effort content, would take multiple individuals and hundreds, if not thousands of hours to create. This cut is really harmful to those higher effort creators and further incentivizes clickbaity low effort content like skin packs which don't take much time to make and use brand recognition of other popular IPs and trends to get noticed and sell, rather than for being high quality with original concepts and designs. But it gets even worse. Marketplace partners and their employees are forced to sign NDAs on their earnings with some texture artists who are commissioned for various tasks not finding out how much they get paid for their work until after they have signed the NDA and accepted the job. 
This effectively means that partners and texture artists aren't allowed to talk about their earnings at all. It's likely done for malicious reasons as well, as Microsoft doesn't want marketplace creators to discuss their earnings in fear of the backlash they may receive. Microsoft knows that the cuts and conditions marketplace creators are forced into aren't exactly good, and when creators receive reports about their monthly sales, they don't even get told how much of their content was sold, rather just how much they made. Here is an example of what marketplace creators get. I've obviously completely altered the numbers and names of the products to protect the user's privacy, but you can see that the exact sales figures aren't present. Obviously, you could reverse engineer this information, but the fact that Microsoft seemingly doesn't include such a vital piece of sales information has led many creators to become suspicious that Microsoft takes a larger cut from sales than they are letting on. I mean, why wouldn't they share such information? It seems incredibly suspicious. That's all I'll say. The market is extremely overwhelmed with content, and many partners making content don't even see $10 a month from some of the things they've made. In addition with the fact that Microsoft takes an aggressive cut, it's really not easy to be an ethical and original marketplace creator. Okay, some of you may be thinking that the issues with stolen parts of skins may be reaching a bit. I mean, it's just some textures, right? But let me explain how this all keys in. As I already mentioned, most partners don't exactly make a lot of money, and it's only becoming harder as more content floods the market. Stealing elements of skins only contributes to this flooding of the marketplace, as it allows for content to be made quicker and easier, thus further drowning out marketplace creators. And since it seems to be immensely difficult to actually report such content and get it taken down, it only continues to pile up. It's like a cycle. Stolen content is produced at speeds far quicker than normal content, it drowns out other original and higher quality content, it gets reported, nothing happens, and more stolen content is produced. The Minecraft Marketplace is a good concept which is extremely poorly executed and Microsoft's failure to address its issues is only letting it continue to get worse day by day. And don't even get me started on the abysmal sales cut, but those speak for themselves. I hope this video provided you all with some insights into the marketplace. Make sure to subscribe for more content like this. Thank you all so much for watching.